so today in this video what we are going to do is uh, we are going to um, download uh, the c6 scripting tool uh, from the contact center uh, page so basically this tool is helpful for uh, you know in order if you want to design any of the call flow for the contact center so uh, if you want to uh, let's say create some sort of a ivr or let's say if you want to play some sort of a prompt for any type of call uh, you can use c6 scripting and you can design your call flow uh, in the c6 scripting uh, tool so this is helpful uh, when um, when it's, it is not similar to you know unity connection like when you go to the um, unity connection web page itself and design the call flow but this is this is a little different where uh, you connect the cc script to the contact center uh, platform and then you design the call flow and save the call flow so once the call flow is saved so uh, you have to just you know make sure like this script is getting utilized by the application so that what will happen is uh, the application can you know use the script and route the calls as per your design what you have designed in the script anyways uh, i'll explain about uh, the script uh, later but at this moment let's verify it or let's see how you can download the contact center uh, scripting tool from the contact center page so what you need to do is you need to go to uh, admin page log into the administrator page and then once you're logged in what you need to do is you need to download the c6 scripting uh, tool from the uh, website right go to tools then plugins so once you go to plugins what you need to do is you need to download this cisco unified c6 editor click on this and what it'll do is it'll download the file so this file is not downloaded from the internet but it, this is basically downloaded from the server itself where uh, where you have hosted uh, the contact center so basically this is downloaded from the platform itself so what i'll do is i'll click on this and start installing the contact center express script Okay, so now it is progressing uh, up, uh, and trying to install the script. Okay. So I'll click on next. It is asking me where you want to install the scripting tool, editor tool. I'll select the default location. I'll click on next again. And then after uh, uh, we click on next, 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 uh, it'll try to, you know, install the complete package on your system. Okay, it is asking you whether you want to restart your system, but in my case, I'm not going to restart. I'll click on no and click on done. So once you uh, install the C6 script, so you will find the C6 script here. So what you need to do is you need to select this. Then what it'll do is it'll open the application like C6 editor. And then what we need to do is you need to define the contact center IP address, username and password so that uh, you can log into the you know, uh, contact center and save the script directly on the server. Otherwise, uh, what you have to do is if in case if uh, you're not using that, uh, you uh, have to download the script locally in your system, uh, save the script in local in your system and then upload the script on the, you know, platform. So we'll talk about this in a while. So for some reasons, it is uh, taking quite a long time. So I believe this is because of the compatibility issue. So I'll click on close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this a little bit and let's see if that's going to help. I'll open the file. I'll again open the file. I'll make this file compatible with Windows 7. So right now, 
I'm going to uh, check this like compatibility mode run this program uh, in compatible mode for Windows 7 apply okay now I'll try to reopen this file let's see if we are able to open the file now For some reasons, I'm not able to open the file. So let me do one thing. Let me uh, fix this up. Let's see where the issue is. Maybe I might have to restart the system. Uh, let's try to make it compatible with Windows XP and C. So as soon as I made it compatible with Windows XP, it looks like I'm able to get the prompt so that I can log into the uh, the script editor. So in the user identification, what you need to do is you need to enter the username. So let enter it as administrator and the password. And then what we can do is we can define the contact center IP address. This is, um, this is my user six IP address. So now there are two ways uh, to log into the or use the script. One is login uh, using this particular option. So which means like uh, once you log in uh, using this option, log on, so you can directly save the file on the UC6 server. So whatever files you are going to modify, it'll save on the server directly. But if in case, if you want to log on as anonymously, so what it will do is like, uh, you can read the files from the system, but um, you will not be able to save the file uh, probably. And you have to uh, save the file on your locally on your system. And then once you, once you modify the script, you have to upload the script on the uh, contact center uh, page um, uh, server manually. So I'll click on log on, let's see. And there are a few tweaks I'm going to explain about it. So uh, which we need to fix so that we can use this script editor easily. So let's see. Okay, so this is how the script editor interface looks like. So you get many, this is the palette bar and this is the place where you set the variables and this is the place where you design the script. Okay, so now let's say I'm going to create a new script. I have to just go to file and then click on new and then it is going to uh, share me some templates like one is context center queues, general IVR, queuing, VRU, voice browser. So for now, I'm going to select this blank script. Okay, so by default, uh, the blank script will have a start and an end. So which means every script should have a start and an end. If it is, uh, if you're missing any of these parameters, right? So the script will fail to run. So if I, let's say, click on validate right now, script validation is successful. Let's see if I delete the start parameter um, or end parameter, let's say, and validate. So it says like uh, the last step on a path must go to end, must be an end or go to. So in that case, like uh, I need to make sure like I either have a end or maybe go to. So if I validate now, so I script validation is successful. So whenever you write any script, right, you have to make sure like script validation is successful. So I'll just save this test file and see if it is allows me to save. So as I said, like uh, by default, you can save this file on locally on your system here. You click on desktop or this PC and save this file uh, locally on your system. But let's say if you want to directly save this file on the system uh, or the server itself, you click on the script repository and then uh, it will give you an access to save the file. 
but I, I believe I'm going to encounter some issues where it will not allow me to, you know, save the file in this script repository. I'll uh, get it fixed. Why? Uh, I'll also let you know why it does not allow me to save this file on the script repository. So as you see, like it does not uh, go here and it is still, uh, you know, getting stuck there uh, in the script repository, right? So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, uh, give you some a walk around. So this is, um, you know, this is a, uh, this happens like when, uh, you know, you're not using a, a full FQDN or your system is not able to resolve the FQDN of the uh, UCCX server. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's say, go to command prompt and run this file as administrator. Yes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say as CD drivers CD, etc, and then notepad host file. So I'm going to open the host file. So this host file will open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, enter the IP address of the UC6 server 0 0.163 and I'm going to uh, enter the host name of the UC6 server. So host name should be UCC, uccx.collabing.com. So I've saved this file. Now, let's do one thing. Let's try to, you know, um, use this again and see if we are able to file save us. Go to script repository. So if you notice, when I click on rep script repository, it has given me an option called default. I'll open this default. I'll just mention the, uh, the script name as test dot EEF, EEF is the format of the script. So now, if I have to show you like where the script is located, go to the application script management and it should be ideally located somewhere here. Um, okay, uh, it says like a field to save script file. Check for some logs, uh, check for the logs. Okay, for some reasons it is failing. So let me, um, uh, I believe that is because of the end user, uh, which I'm not using. Uh, I'm using uh, the administrator username. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, log into the call, uh, log into the UCCX um, administrator page and then go to the user management and administrator capability view. So instead of using a Kanani because that's my LDAP uh, account, so I'm, I'm having some LDAP issues at this moment. So let's create a local end user account on the on the system. I'm going to use this as 10002 and select this as 10002 here and make this as part of the C6 administrator group. Now what I'll do is I'll go to the uh, C6 editor and now use this as 10002 and enter the password and then log in. So let's create a new script. So I'm going to save this file as in the script repository. And let's see if I'm able to save this file now. Okay, looks like I've not encountered any error. So let's validate. I'll go to the script. If you notice, like this file was saved uh, or modified by 10002. And I was directly uh, was able to save this file from, uh, you know, uh, the script editor here to the server. So which means like I don't have to download this script in my system and then go to this CCX editor, uh, sorry, CCX uh, admin page and upload the script manually from here. So I did not do that step. So instead I was able to, you know, look at, uh, save the file directly on the server. So this is how we can, you know, make use of the CCX editor 
and um, these the these are the basic issues what you may encounter so one is like where you might have to enter the fqdn of the ccx server and the, then the ip address of the ccx server in the host file and secondly is like you may have to play around with the ccx admin uh, username in case if you are facing any issues with the username then you can try the same method what i have uh, used Okay, so I hope this is informative for you. Thank you for watching.